Welcome Smashers to Dare Down, coming for you guys live in Santa Ana, California in the beautiful eSports arena. My name is 2GG Bam, and I got a hell of a show for you guys today. I mean, we got so many crazy topics. I've been going through the Twitter sphere, through the streets. We have debates. We have talks of Evo, Genesis 4.9. Everything you ever need is going to be here today. And we want to start that off with, of course, our first segment. Take a look. All right, guys, and here we are in the vault. And the first clip that we have out here today is going to be coming from Super Smash Geek 4, a great tournament that happened in Montreal, Quebec. And let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, there you go. Fair after this. Now, <laughs> Supergirl yeah. Kells, no stranger to getting first place in a multitude of tournaments out in Montreal. She has been oh, on a tear. Just obviously one of the best Sonics that we've seen to date. Being able to take down a lot of the mighty people from the Alex crew, including Venom, and of course, Ally's brother and prominent Rob Main, Holy Nightmare. And no one just moves just quite like her. I love her movement. I love her, how she goes about using the turnaround councils as well to optimize her microspacing. Beautiful bear. She's going to go in for a second one to close out the stock, and that will be that. And... Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Guys, go ahead and check them out. They've been doing a lot of work in this scene. And the next clip, we're going to check out Genesis Saga. <sighs> the damn news, man. Never can stop them, man. Let's get into this clip now. And, of course, we have Echo Fox, MK Leo taking on Tweak. Just one of the crazy matchups that we saw for the kickoff to the 2GG circuit. I'm so glad we got to see this kind of talent. This is how you want to break out in 2017, man. I almost slowly, slowly bring this one back. Slowly but surely. You know, he has all that rage. Oh, my gosh. Do we think? That hurts my soul just watching it again. Like I said, like I said, slowly bring this one back. Had all that rage. Oh, my gosh. And you. A better option. In any case, he damage. Any damage is good damage. Yeah. If you do a super four smash, that's. Oh, man, zero. Man, man, zero. Wait. What did I tell you about Mad Zero? Do not get this man mad and let him on this tree for a little bit. Not able to get that full limit break charge. And oh, oh my, my God, God, the Bay betrayed. Yeah. <laughs> betrayed by the Bay. Yeah. Yo, this <laughs> everything. You know, he was. He went to the tree. He tried to get his limit, and Zero just bullied him. He said, "You're not gonna get this limit for free. Get off that tree. Come down here with no limit." And oh, is that death? That's uh, it. That's it. Uh, oh my uh, gosh. And <laughs> Anthony with the. What was that? Like. <laughs> Grand finals, ladies and gentlemen, Zero takes it. And yeah, definitely a tournament for the ages. And if that is any indicator on how the GGGC is going to be for 2017, it, it's going to be nothing short of phenomenal. Speaking of, of course, Genesis 4 was one in the books. This happened earlier today. But right before, they had a little party action going on, in which they had some of the best players to come out of the gates, prepared for Genesis 4, they got their game on at the tournament at Smash of the Titans, and lo and behold, man, NorCal takes it. Let's take a look. I don't, okay, it's 74%. Now, Yusan was actually one of my favorites to win, or at least get in the top eight at Genesis 4. No one's seen a Duck Hunt at quite that level, and beautiful, talented player. Great bouncing fish coming out of Trevante. This guy jumps out of the roof. <laughs> Hey, man, and that's how you do it. A lot of people still are having trouble against Bayonetta, but Trevante's showing, man, that he can take down even one of the best. You know, you just got to have that pride. You got to have that skill. You can get that thing done. But now let's go into the main course, man. Genesis 4, finally in the books. The play was <laughs> absolutely insane, man. Just, just play it. Just play the clip. Just play the clip. Oh my Rude, goodness! Oh no, the banana, that could have been big for Rude. That might have been the opening he needed, but a good back air. Oh, oh and the dash tag! Oh no, the barrels! The barrels fly in! Explode and... And that's what he's kind of trying to like establish right now, or trying to show tag. And I guess the rest of the... Oh my... Oh! Oh, watch your... Oh, oh my god! Get out, you're done, son! You're done! The charge the up! Goodbye! And that is all she wrote. Another, I'd say this would be yet another upset. Oh, most definitely. 
Oh my god, oh is my that god, gonna work? And oh that is god. it! That is it! Zach was like, I mean, alright, well, we changed the launch rate and uh hey. he has a double jump, right? Yeah, he does have okay. the double jump. How's he getting back to stage? Oh. Again! And that's gonna be an MK layup! And of course, MK Leo is able to take it, man. And this is just the beginning of a young superstar. Ori has done great. He was able to take Zero Saga at the end of 2016. And now taking one of the, the biggest majors to date at Genesis 4. Congratulations to him. But speaking of majors, let's talk about the super major itself. Evo. Evo is coming to play Evo 2017 is going to be absolutely astonishing. And for the first time, for the first time, we have Smash 4 on Championship Sunday. Smash 4 players, give yourselves a hand, man. You definitely did it. I know a lot of people have been eager to actually be on that big stage to show what they can do. And now that you have that kind of fame going alongside this Evo entry, I know a lot of Smash 4 players are just going to have that much more fight in them, that much more vigor, that much more training, because people want to be on that stage. People want to show the world that Smash 4 is here, and it's here to stay. All right, and welcome, welcome to New Challenger Approaches. Today we're going to be doing our interview segment here, and I am blessed by the lovely people. We have Kirby Kid, DC from NorCal, and of course, Vicky Kitty. How are you all doing today? Now we're pretty good, actually. I'm pretty good. <laughs> yep, having a good day. Yeah, all is well that ends with Smash, so I'm good. Hey, man, that's what I want to hear, man. So, of course, we've had, like, explosive Genesis 4 just finished, one for the books, and now we're going to be moving forward into 2017. And I know people are super excited. People just time and time again are talking about this being the year of Smash. So, that being said, there's a lot of hot topics out there. So, let's just get right into it. I got some questions for you guys. First one coming up. What do you guys think of MK Leo? And, you know, obviously this man took Genesis 4. This guy has been on a huge rise just out of nowhere. And, you know, some people see some kind of similarities to how Zero once was, how he kind of came in the fold and immediately just, like, grew to prominence. How do you guys feel about him kind of being there? Do you feel that this is something where he should be seen now as the certified best? Is it something that's still out there, you know, for debate? Kirby Kid, I'm going to start you off, man. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, welcome to the uh, family, MK Leo. As a top player, a new rising top player, he's uh, certainly exciting to watch. And I like how he has his own particularly unique style, bringing it to the metagame, uh, showing Zero how to, uh, you know, compete for that top slot and all the other top players. Um, I think he brings a particular sort of um, style to the game. He represents a very particular play style. And we're actually seeing a lot of other uh, similar styles challenge what he's doing so the, his match with elegant in genesis was yeah. actually really close and i was really rooting for elegant because you know i think mk leo can climb back to the top regardless so i think there's some other interesting challengers approaching and mk leo is about to have a lot of competition in a very strange and unpredictable way yeah no i could definitely see that man i mean that one elegant is so close and honestly he had so many times <laughs> where he had a power shield up b and that would have killed that would have been the end of the game he would have moved on and that's something we usually see him do out here in socal like at msm so like i was very like surprised that he wasn't able to get that up b punished and to kind of close that out but yeah those games were very very close man but dc let me hear from you man what do you think do you think mk leo is the truth is he the one that everyone should be bowing down to tell me man MK Leo is most definitely the truth. All right. <laughs> but what it really takes to be number one is consistency over everything. And he's, I think we're about to see the start of an amazing run where this guy just starts taking tournament after tournament. But zero won, what, like 60 tournaments in a row. Oh, yeah. And then was dictated the number one greatest for sure. Like one of the most intense runs in probably in any, any game, any fighting game ever. So. MK Leo has a long road to go down if he really is going to place himself as the best right now, but I'd bet money that he's going to win a couple of more big tournaments consecutively, and we won't see him fall off um, against someone probably until Evo. Evo's where the big upsets happen. Yeah, no, definitely Evo. Those are, like you said, where the big upsets happen. Now, last but not least, come on. Vicky, can you, I know you got. I know you got something to say. Tell me, do you believe? Are you with these two gentlemen? Do you think that he's just the truth? Um, or do you think he has some do, time to grow? What's going on? 
I do see MKLeo being an incredible Smash player and to show us what he's capable of. At the moment, Zero, I do believe, stands as number one, holding down that crown. Um, but MKLeo has always been a notable Smash 4 player throughout the community. Individuals like Keitaro and Falls knew the capabilities that MKLeo had to perform well in the States. So it was just a matter of time before when he did come, he would just become a child prodigy in doing so, winning all these crazy tournaments. So as DC already mentioned, how um, Zero already won, like, what? It was like 52 consecutive tournaments before Nairo beat him at MLG. Yeah. He has a big ladder, a ladder to climb right now. So it's just, we kind of just have to sit down and see what happens. And then Evo, man, Evo is the tournament to see <laughs> what he could do and where his skills lie. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you said he's someone who has proved himself. This is not a fluke. Sometimes people were like, oh, Mr. R just went down to Mexico. He was just getting bodied. <laughs> you know, he just he doesn't know what's going on. You know, he must be sick, et cetera, et cetera. But like you said, he has definitely shown himself. But to be number one, I mean, especially after like what Zero has done and continues to do, I think that we'll have to wait and see. But obviously, he's one of the best. Clearly one of the best. We all know that at this point. So let's go ahead into our second question. How do you guys feel about one of the other rising stars we have? Captain Zack. So Captain Zack, I mean, <laughs> I see DC already looking up, man. I mean, this guy <laughs> is absolutely explosive. I know a lot of people for a long time were talking about Captain Zack just being just an absolute monster. And they were just waiting for him to kind of showcase his talents. Like, he always had that potential, but it's now about doing it on the big stage. And, I mean, definitely Genesis 4 is kind of a big stage, I guess I would say. So... He definitely did what he had to do there. So what do you guys think about him moving on forward? And also kind of an interesting bit that DC has brought up to a lot of people about rivalries. How do you feel about him kind of coming out there and not only just being a, a phenomenal player, but just the so showsmanship overall? I mean, that's something we don't really see that much in Smash 4, at least not yet. So I'm going to start off with you, Vic Katie. I'm going to go back forth. So I want to hear okay. from you. What do you have to say so about Captain Zack? I think Captain Zack and his performance at Genesis really reflected on his personality. It showed that he likes to express himself. He likes to stand out in the community. And that kind of spices things up within our community. It kind of brings the attention to him like, okay, so look at what this new player is capable of. Look at how he stands out. He just didn't care about what the audience had to say about him. And he made that pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean... <laughs> He was just stunting on people, man. He just, even when he came down for the top eight, just the catwalk, man. I loved it. I lo as a, especially, you know, I play Bayonetta, so I love that. When he did the walk, I was like, all right, this, is, this guy's the truth. Absolutely. So, DC, what do you have to say about Captain Zack? I already know you said some choice words, but let the people know here. How do you really feel? To the people, you must know Captain Zack is the future. This man is the future because. Not only is he an amazing player playing a controversial character that still has a lot of depth to be discovered, yeah. but he is the first player to go out there and to really put his personality out there to not stay within the confines of what everyone believes is safe. And that's uh, part of what the rivalries are about. I just wrote something about it. I got a lot of topics on my mind, but Captain Zack perfectly embodies the energy and the personality that we can allow ourselves to show on camera while still being respectful graceful amazing players and personalities out there captain zach has my vote easily hands down and i cannot wait to see more of that man and how he affects other players and allows them to open up some more oh yeah no absolutely absolutely i mean <laughs> It's just, again, he is someone who has a showmanship that we have not seen from any other Smash 4 player. And a lot of times you would see some people who may kind of be that way, but they haven't been able to actually play on that stage before, you know? You have some people yeah. who will be popping off. They'll be crazy things. I'm like, yo, like, I, I love that. I love the energy, but you got to get in top 32 first. Right, you, need, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can pop off, but yeah, that's pools. So, like, I need exactly. to see the real deal. But he was able to come on this stage and have that charisma and have the skills to back it up. Kirby Kid, what do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, it's it was really entertaining to see see what he could do, especially on the stage. I heard a little bit about sort of um, 
I think one of the commentators said, I hope, I, I think he said he was, he, if he could jump up on the stage, he would be dancing right now. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could see that. And then right on the, the final sort of award ceremony, he, he showed us a little bit of what he could do. So that was great. I think that kind of energy is uh, a lot of fun. I think Smash has just a really sort of uh, fun loving and lighthearted energy and spirit that a lot more people need to sort of feel free to embrace. I mean, me back in the Melee days, my Kirby, I used to dance and play all the time and, and do little victory dances and people didn't like it back then. And now with the um, FGC kind of going crazy about taunting in the middle of the match and whether or not they're going to ban that, <laughs> oh, I just want to go in the complete opposite direction and say, we need to be dancing, we need to be having fun, we need to be uh, popping off in whatever respectful way that we deem and just have a lot of fun with it. So more of that to come. Thumbs up for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great stuff by Captain Zach. And of course, part of the question too, again, rivalries is that something that we want to see more so going on in the future of course we have kind of the whole setup to happen with between ally and zero and the whole civil war but aside from that we really haven't had people who have actually been willing to put themselves out there and actually confront a player and talk to them about how they feel about them like how like this is how i feel about you i don't care what you do what you've been i'm going to beat you and you can say whatever you want i'm going to beat you and that's it and I mean, we've seen Day do that, but again, we that's so far in between. So DC, I'm gonna hit it off with you. Tell me how you feel about that. What, what do you wanna see moving on forward? Do you wanna see more rivalries? Do people need to be esports? Let me know. Man, the number one problem that I see with the concept of, of how we don't have rivalries is that people think that esports means you can't be a competitor in the aspect of rivalries. And that's just not true. My number one favorite competitor when it comes down to rivalries is K9, the king of smash. <laughs> yes. Because he does the thing that I think is like the perfect mindset. If he loses to someone who he does not want to lose to, he will stand up, shake their hand and say to them, I will never lose to you again. And that is a rivalry that holds so much respect at the same time having so much intensity behind it, really setting a stage to going, K9 said he will never lose to this man again. Every single match is on fire yeah. from that point yeah. on. It's true. So people can expand to that point where they go, you know what? Zero, I respect you, Ally, I respect you, Void, Larry Lear, I respect you, but because I respect you, I'm gonna beat you into the ground. And that's an okay thing to say, in my opinion. No, absolutely. Kirby Kid, any thoughts on that? Rivalries yeah, I think I think this uh, bleeds a little bit into the next question, but it, I think one thing I would like to see highlighted more in our entire sort of metagaming community is that there are so many different play styles, so many different ways to play Smash, and sometimes it's really hard to see how players sort of exhibit their own play style and what little things they do that are really signature of how they think and, and how they want to fight. So I think what a rivalry can really do is say, hey, you've got a particular style, commentators and the players should identify that. Like you like to jump, you like to do short hop, whatever, you like to play safe in this particular way. And then when they set the rivalry, they need to be like, I'm going to beat that. Like whatever you do, whoever you are and how it's expressed in the game, I'm going to destroy it. And I think that'd be a neat way to both highlight how diverse the game is, how diverse our players are, and just to keep everyone along for the ride because it's a lot more than just whoever wins and whoever loses, whoever pops off. It's like how we get there and, and the journey that these players are taking. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Vicky, do you agree? Same thing. Are you looking for these rivalries? So what, how I see rivalries is uh, basically a spice to the public. It gives the audience something to look forward to. It's not the norm. Oh, you know, this guy is going to shake this guy's hand. They're going to play their set and they're going to walk off and accept the end results of it. No, I think it's more to that. It's basically putting on a show for the community, having a community to choose what side is who and what side they want to be on, such as Ally versus Zero. Um, you have Day versus Zero. There's a few rivalries going on within the community that it just continues to be low key because I guess they just don't want to spark up that, oh, you know, we just want to be esports. We just want to yeah. be classy. Oh, yeah. But not necessarily, already, as DC mentioned, uh, it's not necessarily you being unclassy. It's, it depends on how you kind of treat the situation. But if you present yourself in a respectable manner while respecting your opponent at the same time, you're actually just kind of putting on a performance for that audience. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's pretty spicy and it, it will make things a lot more interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like you said, like there's a way to be, have a rivalry and at the same time be classy. And I think sometimes people 
um, like DC, you already said in a t tweet that you put out, just a lot of times people just confuse the two. They think that in order for me to want to beat someone, I have to hate their existence. I have to hate their mother. I have to hate their family. Like they just got to go. Like that's all everyone thinks. But the reality is you can have a rivalry with someone. You can fight against them. You want to beat how they are, like how they play. And you can, you can become better from that. You know, as just in general as a person. And I think that's one of the great things just in general in life. In order to have someone who you compete against, who you want to beat so bad, and at the end of the day, that brings out the best in you. And I think that's super exactly. important just for you as a player and also obviously for the fans because people want to see some blood. <laughs> that's, that's how people are, right? They want to see some blood. But moving on forward, what do you guys think about the metagame? Now that we kind of seen Genesis 4, and one of the things I love about Genesis is that once Genesis happens, it's the time for you to actually really look and see where is this metagame moving forward for this year? So we're in 2017 now. Where do you guys think Smash 4 is going to be going? Kirby Kid, I'm going to start off with you. Can I go last? You get last? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's your show, man. You do whatever you want. Vic, <laughs> you started off. Go ahead. Where do you think the metagame is moving? So this is a... a you could kind of approach this in a few different ways. Um, so how I see the metagame going as of right now, looking at all the discussions going on, uh, which actually could go into our next question, the whole stage list, the whole um, putting up a show for the whole production aspect of it and the audience, getting other fighting games to pay attention to the main point of what our game is all about. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we are ventured in 2017 towards the more production aspect of the game mm -hmm. to basically show other games that, hey, we are here to stay and we are here to perform and we are here to make a statement. And I kind of feel like that's where our game is kind of venturing towards for mm -hmm. 2017 because I really do feel like this is going to be one of the biggest years for Smash 4. No, absolutely. And I actually really like that you were thinking about the whole aspect because you weren't just thinking about the game in itself, the metagame, but in terms of like the community metagame that we're looking at. And that's something that a lot of times I feel like people aren't necessarily looking at in that kind of sense. So that that was a beautiful answer. That was an amazing answer. Because like I said, <laughs> I, I thought you were talking about like, oh, you know, maybe they're going to be edge guarding more, all these kind of things. That's not what you're talking about. But yeah, you, you went into the overall scheme. See, you're trying to build a future. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> there you go, Vicky. <laughs> DC, you're next, man. What do you think of where the metagame is going to be moving on to 2017? I'm going to talk about characters okay. uh, in this part of the meta. Okay. Um, character picks are already pretty wild, and they're only going to expand farther and farther. Because in Smash 4, we have a game that is so beautifully like Street Fighter yeah. and that you have so many different characters to choose from that are that are high tier, top tier, yep. but they have these hard counters in the mid and sometimes even low tier. Yeah. So we have seen Marth go from a character that everyone said was trash to being, oh, is, is Marth top 15? Is Marth top 10? Exactly, and exactly. Then, uh, what, three duck hunts going through Genesis 4, just cutting everybody up. Yes easily like brood coming in and beating zero already they're going to be six duck hunts at every single local <laughs> oh, yeah. like, brand new duck hunt mains. Oh, yeah. that's about um, <laughs> we have a couple of other characters that i think don't have um as much representation but they do have some good counter picks True. i'm thinking we're going to see more game and watch okay. we're going to see more shulk um lucario's there aren't enough Lucarios, but that character is seriously fierce, and especially the matchup against Sheik, very, very doable. Yeah. Um, there are probably some other characters that I'm uh, not even thinking of off the top of my head, but we're going to see some characters come out the cuts, and people are going to be like, oh, this is a joke. Like, this person isn't going to get very far. And then that top 32 winner side is going to be looking very clean because all the pros are going to be in loser's side because they were prepared. Yeah. No, no, I can definitely see that, man. I say it time and time again. When I look at this game as a whole, there's just this is probably one of the most balanced games. If you look at just the size of the roster, then not just any Smash title, but just like in general in like fighting games, usually they don't yeah. have this kind of magnitude of characters to select from that are actually viable. And that's the crazy thing about this game. There's a lot of characters that, like like you said, uh, Game and Watch, where I feel people just think that automatically he's not going to be good because he's different from his brawl iteration and i would definitely like a lot of the characters have that kind of formula but hey people also said that about marth and look where we see marth now and it's i think it's because these characters because juggling as a whole is so potent 
in this current in the metagame in the whole, just in terms yeah. of Smash Four. And so even though the character may not be as good, he still has very great tools for the fundamental aspects of what is strong in Smash Four. That being said, Kirby Kid, I know you have a lot to say. You wanted to be last for a reason, so talk to <laughs> me, man. What do you have to say about the metagame moving on? All right, cool. So piggybacking off of what DC and you were talking about, Bam, uh, there's a lot that we've learned and a lot of surprises that have happened in the last year of Smash. Characters that we thought were trash or good, characters that we didn't think were viable at all, like Duck Hunt just coming up and showing us what they're all about. And uh, I think a lot of what we've been thinking about for the metagame is always looking back. Like we're waiting for a player to come up, beat us, tell us why this character is good before we start thinking they're good. And I'm coming at it from a very different perspective. I'm looking purely at like what the character is made of, what their design is, and saying these characters have potential. There's in, in, there's whole aspects of the game that we're not even touching yet that will make some characters shine and then even counter some of the things that players are doing now. So when, when I look at Genesis, I see a lot of spirit, I see a lot of talent, I see a lot of heart, but I also see a huge hole in what we're doing st strategy wise, right? You just can't jump around that much in Smash. And when we start playing out of our shields better, when we start learning the frame data, when we start actually making specific counters to specific moves and specific matchups, you're going to see an entire shift in what we know. And the entire year, the whole year of 2007 has a huge opportunity to be very unlike 2016. I mean, I think Diddy and Sheik are going to drop, and I think some surprising characters are going to rise. But there's no way to know for sure until the players actually get in there and show us what it's all about. So like DC was saying, we're going to see some characters uh, surprise us. We're going to see, hopefully, the resurgence or the, the rebirth of the ground game for Smash 4. And we're going to see people actually edge guarding. Please just study some matchups because that is <laughs> yes. the difference between yes. winning and losing. Yes. You can't just sit there on the stage and expect to give up your advantages and then be like, oh, the match was close. It shouldn't have been close. Come on, people. We can band <laughs> together. We can learn better. We can, we can ask more questions and we can really take the game to the next level. And I think we can only do it together. So that's what I have to say. Yeah. No, I love this, man. Yeah, man. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I know, like, obviously, you you run OneSmash.net. You have this huge database of tech. You know, I've been trying to assist you with different stuff, too. There it is, man. <laughs> but, you know, I've been trying to assist you as well in terms of, like, putting that tech to the forefront. And, you know, we've talked about option selects that, like, are not being used at all. And that's something that is huge in other fighters. You know, that can be the meaning of life or death there. And edge guarding too, a huge proponent of the game where I feel that people have been, some people have been kind of like elevating, but not in its entirety, man. And that, that needs to change. That definitely needs to change. And I really hope that we do see that in 2017. And as people get kind of more familiar with certain hitboxes, where certain intangibility is, because sometimes people are just like, oh, this is intangible. And so there's like, oh, well, I'm not even going to do anything against it. Well, it's like, okay, not the whole body is intangible. So you can yeah. do something about it. Certain attacks are going to be able, you're going to be able to utilize against this kind of character if you're going to throw out this move. So, I, you know, I do hope that people kind of get a better mindset there with that. So absolutely right. But Can we at least start attacking characters that yes. have no oh, hitboxes yes. as a recovery? Just throw please. out an attack and please. then get back to the stage. Just hit him. Just hit him. Rosalina. Yes. Olimar. Yes. Duck Hunt. Yes. All these characters. Please. Yeah. You're right, my friend. Yeah. You're super yeah. right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So hoping, I really do hope that we do see that in EVO 2017. So speaking of EVO 2017, I want to hear about you guys. Top eight for EVO 2017. Vicky, I'm going to start with you. Top eight. So I know that some people have their own idea of what their top eight is going to be. So in no order, because if it is in this order, I demand a lottery. I, d I demand all the money. <laughs> demand all the money in the world. All the money. <laughs> but in no order, I want to say Zero, MKLeo, okay. Ally, Mr. R, Renai, Tweak, The Buzz, and Larry Lurk. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Now, I would say probably out of all the people that you named, probably the the most quote unquote shocking, not really shocking, but Tweak. I mean, we've seen him kind of always been like a really dominant player, but do you think that he's going to be able to have the mental fortitude moving on forward to kind of fulfill, like, you know, fulfill his pot potential? Because we all know this kid's got it all the so time. So, Evo is really far away from today, mm. and recently uh, i mean it's not really recent because he's already proven to have yeah. the potential and mindset to excel in this game absolutely but of a recent results it's 
Like he won a tournament with DK. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was actually cloud. ridiculous. Dude. Like, <laughs> that was actually ridiculous. <laughs> like, let's talk about that for a second. He won an entire tournament with DK. That requires fundamentals that requires a proper neutral with that specific character mm. if he could do it with dk and he could do it with cloud i think for sure he could break top eight for evo and i know 100 percent by the time eagle comes rolling around he will have the capability in placing that high yeah 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 i mean and it wasn't just like he won a tournament with dk i mean he won a tournament with dk that had like mk leo komori kiri like <laughs> exactly, these were killers exactly. if you guys didn't see it like it wasn't just a tournament it was absolutely insane and i mean only dk only dk <laughs> man dc who's your top eight going into evo 2017 man this is a tough question because everyone is doing so well there are like 16 people who could win the evo um, but if I were betting man, I would put down MK Leo, Zero, Void, yes. Ally, Anti, Mr. R, Komori Kiri, and Tweak. Ooh, okay. So another Tweak, man. I, I like oh, that. Yeah. I like that. And Void, man. Well, I know, I mean, obviously, Void has always been talented, doing oh. extremely well. That's, I'm not going to lie to you guys. That's my boy right there, man. I, I want him to do so damn well. Him and Larry, those two, I'm always cheering for them. And honestly, every time they're in a top eight, it has been absolutely phenomenal. Every time those guys play each other, it's been absolutely phenomenal. So not just from a like skill standpoint, but just from a viewer standpoint, I would love to see Void and Larry Lair in a top eight. Like, I, I want to see that. I want to see that. Genesis 3, they had them. It was insane. I would really love to see these guys come back again and again, push the metaphor Fox and Sheik going into 2017. Kirby Kid, who is your top eight for Evo 2017? All right, so we're going we're gonna to go with Ally and uh, MK Leo, mm -hmm. Zero, Mr. R. I'm going to throw in Salem, Renai, DeBuzz, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the last one, I'm going to throw in Elegant. Oh, elegant. Okay. That's a good choice. Okay, so, okay. Here's why okay. I'm going to throw in elegant. All right. Like we were talking before, he is actually studying the option selects. I talked to him on Twitter. When I see something on stream, I go immediately to Twitter. I'm like, did you know what you were doing? And he's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. So at the very least, he's studying his tech. He's looking at these matchups very carefully. He's, he's creating situations where he wants to kill you with one touch. And that's going to go a long way in uh, propelling him through the bracket. But in particular, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to prepare for that tournament in a general sense. Like, let me practice my neutral. Let me just make sure I stay patient. But the people who are practicing the very specific things that are going to take stocks, right, take stocks and matches early, they're going to get some surprising upsets. And Elegant is has the character for it, and he has the mindset for it. So I'm hoping to see Elegant in a top eight situation in EVO. And the other, the other players that I listed, you know, you already know them. We've already listed them uh, on our other list. So you can come to expect them to step up as they have been. But hopefully those those few wild cards like Salem and Elegant, they're going to show up. I mean, he's been body <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of people. I think that he's someone that now more and more people are seeing him among just the, the elite of the elite. Um, Elegant, like you said, too, it's great because he's someone who has – I feel like some people are still kind of playing Brawl-esque in a way in this game. People are getting better. They're moving away from that. But I feel mm -hmm. that people like uh, a Void or a Elegant or um, like a Captain Zack, you know, these people are playing at the level where they're trying to focus in on their punishment game and just each conversion they get, you are, you're get it's hurting. You either hurt or you're dead. Like, one or the other. That's what they do. And I know, Kirby Kid, you've talked about it before and, you know, during talks that we've had. But ideally in Smash, people need to recognize that you could die at any percent. And one of the greatest things you can do for yourself as a competitor is to understand how you can kill someone at any percent. And that's something super huge. You don't have to just wait until, oh, I'm just going to tack up damage. And then finally I'm going to get, like, some late kill confirm. Like, no, there are setups where you can pe put people in certain positions where – like, they choose wrong, like, that's it. That's the end of your game. That's the end of your stock. <laughs> Move on to the next one. So, um, and Elegant definitely follows that, man. He follows that philosophy, man. That's why, that's why he's one of my sons. Not going to lie. He's one of my sons. So, <laughs> I'm very proud of what he's been able to do. But um, also, EVO 2017, since there's been some murmurs in the streets, we need to talk about what's going on with the stages, man. What's going on with that? DC, do you have anything to say about these stages? 
I got a lot to say about these stages, man. Uh, the first thing about the stages is that we're already in a situation where nobody really wins. Because if you keep the current stage list, you have stages like Duck Hunt that the only real reason I say ban Duck Hunt in an ideal world is because there's no Z axis. That's just unfair. Yeah. Like, it, it just takes something completely out of the equation. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, there's stages like Lilat, there's, you know, tilting, there's, um, which is it's an interesting factor. Um, and I think that the music is very good. And I think that music <laughs> is extremely important to the game for yeah. viewers. Oh, absolutely. Like, like, you should not be playing the the most quiet and chill song on Smashville uh, Grand Finals at a tournament. I'm yeah, just throwing that I, in I there. Believe it, man. Quick. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Man. But um, <laughs> then at the same time, though, you start limiting the stages. We move down to three and one ban, and then no bans when you're in a best of five, and you're in a situation where now the balance is upset. You don't have as many options. There are it cuts down on play styles as well. Um, the advantages you may have from being on a bigger stage, platform stage, stuff like that, you have to end up winning on a stage um, where you might not have an advantage much more often than it would if you have even an option for something more neutral that's available to you because of the many different stage choices. Yeah. So I think instead of lowering the amount of stages, it's going to end up coming down to more bands mm -hmm. because we have some duplicates or, or close to duplicates like Battlefield and um and dreamland stuff like that but it, it's definitely not going to be as clear-cut as oh we're going to just increase or decrease something there's going to be a lot of leeway and a lot of uh a lot of compromise is going to be necessary yeah no absolutely absolutely kirby kid what do you have to say about the stages man yeah I, i've lived through so many stage wars already uh back in melee i was just fighting for our stages i was when the um japanese were coming over for i think oc3 and they decided to do a three-stage tournament rule say i was so upset like i need my pokemon stadium kirby needs not to play on dreamland 64 in melee like that is essential for actually making that weak terrible character somewhat doable and i see the, the same kinds of things happening with every smash and i just implore people to really sort of articulate their feelings and think about uh some of the changes they're making they people throw around the word unfair a lot i'm like it's not unfair there's there's unfair it has like should have a very specific use for actually unfair situations but you having the flexibility to either ban one stage or pick a different character study matchups and have specific plans of actions for things that might come up that is within your your freedom and that's what you should do as a competitor and i think having things in the game that encourage people to pick up more characters to uh study things a little bit more specifically to band together and pull resources is a good thing for the community and meta overall and i don't like this talk of just getting rid of stages because there's two triplats where i come from smash 64 there was no fd so platforms are normal to me platforms are default and and fd stages are kind of weird and exceptional so i don't think dreamland and battlefield are too similar i think those are normal but I'm not going to get rid of those and I'm not going to get rid of the flat stages just because I think Sheik is scary on Smashville. We need to have this this diversity. We need to push people to learn more and complain less. Okay. Okay. No, I definitely respect that. I think that uh, a lot of people, when they talk about having a multitude of stages, I think sometimes they don't really think from that point of view. They just, oh, well, you know, I, I love this stage. I think it's cool. Uh, like, you know, it's just really great for my character, but I like the kind of holistic approach that you're looking at, and I think a lot of more people need to look at it that way, so you can actually have a very real talk about what we need to do about stages and how we need to move forward. Vicky, what do you think about the stages? So this is kind of going to retract to where I was talking about the whole production part of this game and how it's going to move forward in 2017. I feel like this whole debate sparked up from hearing that we were going to be on the main stage at EVO on Sunday, Thank you so much, Evo. Um, that whole situation sparked up because the whole thing of, hey, no one wants to see Bayonetta or, I don't know, somebody camping up there on the duck hunt tree. That's not going to be fun. People aren't going to be hyped up for that. Although it is in the game, so you could abuse it as much as you want. People want to focus more on the audience and the viewership of the game. So I could see how this whole debate on stage select came to be. Personally, in my opinion, 
I don't have a problem with any of the stages because I learned to adapt. I learned to adapt to who I play against and where I'm in at counter pick. But I could see the reasoning amongst every stage that people have been talking about. Duck Hunt, Lila, Dreamland. Those are the three that I'm hearing mostly. I've also heard FD a few times here and there. Um, Duck Hunt, I could see the reasoning. DC brought it up. The Z-axis. You know, there's already characters, Cloud, that already have that, you know, thing going on in any stage. But to include it on Duck Hunt, it could skewer the the results actually. It could skewer the hitboxes. You could be labbing something forever, and then suddenly your up air doesn't connect because the character is in the Z axis, and you're like, oh, okay. And then Doug, the dog, uh, the dog is there to like save you or to actually help you extend your combos. It's a win or lose situation in that type of environment. Um, Lilat, I'm pretty sure I and many other people here in this chat or whoever's going to watch has been lilighted before. I have been directly below the platform and I do not grab onto the ledge. I have seen so many crazy shenanigans, shulk up air, uh, up air although that's already happened on um, Smashville too, going through the platforms in the middle of the stage. That's a thing as well. Uh, Diddy Banana, the most recent one that we've all been seeing. Oh. Mr. R rolling onto the stage <laughs> and the banana catching his roll. Although that happens because... um. Sheik's hurt box extends from the roll. It caught onto the banana. It's actually quite unfortunate because I do recall that it actually might happen on Battlefield as well. So that's just something you have to keep in mind about the stage mechanic. That's something you need to lab. Um, that and then the other one was Dreamland. The whole argument for Dreamland was why do we need another Battlefield? I mean, it's not necessarily another Battlefield because the platforms are slightly higher and the ceiling's just a tad bit different. Um, but I could see the reasoning for that too. I don't want to say it's another battlefield because in my eyes, Wispy is a factor in that stage. Wispy could definitely alter what happens and how somebody is aware of the stage situation, of the stage presence, of the stage uh, character and the other opponent. I just think those factors all come into play. And as for Final Destination, another topic that was brought up, I don't really see what's wrong with that stage. I don't think there's, I, other than the fact that certain characters struggle to land, just go for the ledge. Like, the, you get invincibility. Like, you're, the safest option is to go for the ledge. Maneuver your way safely around your opponent and just go for the ledge. Off that invincibility instead of landing on your opponent, landing in front of your opponent, or trying to mix it up when they're stuck in their shield, when they can just commit to an action out of shield. Like, <laughs> yeah. just those are all, like, my opinions on the different stages. Um, Again, if I have to pick stages that had to be banned, it would be Duck Hunt. And I'm okay with Town and City. I'm okay with Smashville. I don't mind if Dreamland gets taken out of the equation, but I don't really see a necessity for that. Um, I'm okay with Battlefield, and I'm okay with FD. Yeah, I mean, sounds good. I think that, uh, like you said, people, you got to adapt, man. Like, yeah, that's what needs to happen at the end of the day. You need to adapt. I think for me personally, I've always felt that a smaller stage list is good. Not specifically because it's like, oh my gosh, you have to deal with all these problems, but because of as, in my personal opinion, the thing that I feel like is more noteworthy of skill, and again, I understand this is very subjective, but I want those player to player interactions. So I love stages like, uh, of course there's gonna be stage interactions that you have to deal with in Smashville, in uh, Final Destination, in Battlefield as well, Town and City, and all those kind of stages. But I do like, kind of focusing more so or prioritizing the player to player interactions rather than the stage equation and I think that's why I like a smaller stage list but I think that a lot of times a lot of people the reason why they want to ban stages like oh my gosh this is so stupid oh my gosh this is so dumb it's like well actually there is some kind of methodology here as to why these are happening these town and city platforms aren't just randomly flying around in circles and no one could get on it you know they're like there there is something going on there and uh, same thing even with uh, Duck Hunt. Although, I'll tell you right now, I hate that stage. I think <laughs> I, I hate that stage, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why I hate that stage. Not just in terms of the, just a viewer, but I think that when you look at Duck Hunt, I think that it you have these player-to-player -player interactions. There's stuff that you can learn about the stage. But again, I feel like it takes away from the player-to-player -player interactions that should be happening. And I feel like that whole – the tree – I feel like there are characters, if people are willing to do so, that can circle camp there. And I do actually think that is a viable option. Now, is that something where people want to be like, oh, well, what's wrong with that? Okay, fine. We can do that if you want to do that. That's perfectly fine. And that's okay. And people can learn to adapt around that. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all there. But 
I do think in terms of what we should be looking for and to what I think is skillful, I think that Duck Hunt is not going to have it as so much. I wouldn't prioritize someone being a god at the game because they can dance on a tree all day rather than <laughs> someone actually having these, like, you know, deal, moving, utilizing platforms correctly, you know, or the moving platforms correctly. I feel like, to me, that has... I'm more invested in that, not just as a spectator, but also as a player and just in terms of uh, determination of someone's skill. So that's where I'm at with these stages, man. But... I'm so gonna Doug, get, oh yeah, go ahead, Duck go ahead. Hunt out... And uh, Skyworld in? Anybody? Oh. Skyworld? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Transformationless Pokemon Stadium 2 would fix everything. Oh, that would be a beautiful thing. If maybe, <laughs> if if some crazy possibility and the switch changes to the game a little bit GC. and we have like a port or whatever it is, Bill just give us a, a Transformationless yeah. Pokemon Stadium 2 oh, yeah. and solve everything. Oh yeah. Or just Is take it... hazards off. Just just give yeah, us a just have us just take yes. hazards. Yes. Yes. Just hazards off button. <laughs> Does anybody want um Yoshi's from Brawl? Yoshi's Island from Brawl? I'd love that. I would actually Wasn't it love in the 3DS? It. Yeah, it was in the it's DS. It's in the DS version, yeah. but man, I but really I like that it, stage. Yeah, I heard I like it too, but I also know that in the way that certain things work in this game, I feel like that stage would actually be super crazy. But I mean, I'd be down to see what ha what happens. But yeah. you know what I mean. Like I, I I think I think it would be dangerous. I think it'd be damn dangerous. But I want to go into the final thoughts from you guys. I'm gonna give you guys each 20 seconds. Vicky, I'm gonna start with you. Just anything you want to say to the people here who are watching you today. Uh, keep supporting the community. Honestly, this is gonna be Smash's biggest year. So just keep it up. Keep up the players currently attending all these nationals. I want to keep seeing different diversity of national players coming to these uh big majors i want to provide the best we could possibly provide towards the production of those majors and make sure our viewership goes high up the roof again i said it already i want to make sure we make an impact in the fighting game community to tell them that we are here to stay absolutely dc any words my words are definitely uh, along the sign of uh, along the lines of kirby kids is that we are getting to a point in the Smash community, especially within Smash 4, where we're hitting that growth point. 2017 is going to be an insanely great year for every game, but Smash 4 yeah. especially. Yeah. And we need to put aside a lot of the complaining and really focus on development and growth. Because if you're not focused on utilizing this time that we have, then we are cutting down the potential future of this game. So focus on what's valuable, which is diversifying our content, making sure that we're putting 100% into all of the work that we can do and making sure that our goal remains clear. And that is to be a welcoming community that is out here to grow and let people enjoy our game in whatever way possible. Absolutely. And Kirby, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I just want everyone to remember to be curious. Uh, remember to ask questions instead of complain or instead of uh, suggest fans for things because, you know, there's a lot of resources out there. We're here to help people lab tech. We collect tech. And if you have a question about something that you think is broken, just ask us. We'll lab it and we'll all learn together. Um, we don't want to keep playing this game of rock, paper because there's definitely a rock, paper, scissors aspect. And if you don't know all of your options, if you don't know the full range of what this game has, then we're only playing a small part. And I think that's really sad. So we can do it. Let's do it. 2017. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Let's do it. I mean, people said it already, man. This is the year. This is a year of Smash. So definitely want to see people moving on forward, elevating their game, elevating their production, elevating just everything we can about this. I mean, this is the year for us to really show people where we're headed and what this game really means to all of us and so people go ahead and follow these people these people are incredible not just for the community but as a whole just wonderful wonderful people and i appreciate having all of you guys here and hopefully some of you guys will come back around next time man I, we're definitely going to be doing this a lot more and i really appreciate having you guys on the show thanks man it's been awesome yeah, i man. truly appreciate yeah. it man of course until we'll next time yes until next time <laughs>all right and we have reached the final stage of dare down and that's of course the one the only final destination and i am joined here by my good friend 2gg strides how are you doing today i'm doing great bam i'm excited to be on this uh, section of the show i think it's very interesting what we're doing here for smash and um, it's very new and we're just gonna see where it goes i think it'll be great though
No, absolutely, absolutely. So, of course, this is going to be a debate show. And already we have on the center screen a little test of one of the topics we're going to be discussing today. I'm sure you guys can guess it already. Going to have that beautiful point nine life on deck. But let's talk about the topics that we have here, the questions that people need answers to. Okay. So, 2GD Strides, I need to know from you. Do you believe that coaching should be a part of the Smash 4 meta moving on in 2017? Yes, I completely agree with coaching right now. Uh, I think Melee has already kind of set the door open for that with, you know, Mango having his coach in Tava Kint and Hungry Max having a coach with uh, Captain Crunch. And it's only a matter of time for Smash 4 uh, gets to that level as well. So I definitely agree that we should have professional paid coaches for teams, like maybe like a TSM coach for, uh, for Smash 4, like a C9 coach, uh, something like that. Yeah, okay. I definitely think okay. that's a good thing. Okay, I mean, I, I was with you. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I was with you. Uh-huh. But I heard professional. What are you saying that other people can't have coaches? Uh, no, I definitely don't think that the the layman should be able to pick anyone from the crowd to just come on stage and just offer some type of tips or strategy. I I think it should be taken as professionally and seriously as possible. So no, that's that's where I stand. That no. So how about people who are trying to be professional? I mean, what what are they going to do? Do they just have that default handicap because they're not making bankrolls all the time? If they're not on TSM, that they're not on CLG. Is that what you're trying to say? Are you saying the stream monsters at home don't get anything? Is that what you're telling these people? I think he's talking. Are you talking to these people right here? You're telling me that they're not going to be able to get coaches while the greats, the zeros, the allies, the voids, the zenus of the world are not going to get anything? Is that what you're telling me now? Um... Not necessarily. I mean, of course, you know, you could aspire to become a coach, you know, but I think that should be something that you take seriously, not just, oh, I know this top player. He's my friend. Come up on stage. That's cool. I mean, anyone could be a coach, but if they actually set to the, their mind to do that, their skill set to be that, yeah. I think that's a thing that should be nurtured and grown, and I definitely think that should be a thing going into the future. You already see it right now. I think Pierce is – I don't know if it's official yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing for Zero right now as his personal coach. True. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see more of that. That's my opinion. That's what I'm standing by. Um, sticking to it. Yeah. All right, man. All right. I mean, I'm going to tell you like it is. I think that there should be coaching moving forward. I think it elevates the metagame as a whole. I think that when we're looking at players and where they want to be, there's a lot of idiosyncrasies that can learn in terms of their opponents to elevate their game. There's a lot more technical aspects we can see in terms of their game. I mean, we've seen it. We have greats like Ally who do really well in tournaments, and he's got some kind of solid punishes. But then you have people like Zenyu who are kind of blowing those out of the water. And I think that's something that a coach could probably bring to him. You know, that's what people kind of need moving forward. And I think that's why Zero himself, knowing that he's kind of pushed himself to a certain level and he's going to continue to do so, he needs someone to also kind of bring him into the full in terms of extra stuff that he can add on to his meta. And then as he can get better and as he can level up, he can be in a better place. But that being said, I got come on, man. You're telling me that the people at home, they can't have one person? You can't have your one boy. I, okay, I don't believe I should be crew. You shouldn't have I, you shouldn't have your mama, your auntie, your okay, uncle. Okay, they shouldn't be talking, on stage. They shouldn't be on stage. All right, see, but I think you should have. You one. have to establish that because we've had so many moments where a player's stuck on stage and he's like, you know what, crew, come on stage, rally everybody. You have five, ten people come on stage, and then there's like a like a five minute intermission, and it's just it's just ridiculous. So I think it needs to be regulated, official like time slots. These coaches have to be on stage. It's one person, one consistent person. Throughout, I want to say like a maybe like a top 32, anyone can come out and uh, be that one person to do that. I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that it only should be in kind of a top 32 format, anyways, because otherwise you're gonna have people just going around, just like you said, there's people just randomly going on stage. But I think if you've gotten to top 32, then you earn the right to have a coach. I think that's a very solid format for people moving on forward. And I think it's something good that elevates the game. You see it in regular sports. You see it in e like other esports as well. So I think why not? As we're moving more into the fold, we should be going that direction. Okay. But that being said, let's go into topic two. And this is a good one. This All one right. I, I, I need to hear it. from you. I'm going to hit it with you. Okay. So we have EVO 2017. We've had Smash 4 has been announced. Melee is going to be announced. Of course, these games, these are the big dogs out there now. It doesn't matter what some of the other people want to say in FGC. We're doing big things. And so you're going to have Smash 4. You're going to have Melee. But only Smash 4 
is going to be on the big stage at Championship Sunday. Now, do you believe that is the right course of action? Do you believe that both games should be on or just one? Smash 4 should be the only stage, the only Smash game played on stage at EVO 2017. Why? Because I think even though we are Smashers know that there's a huge difference between Melee and Smash 4, having two Smash games on stage for like the the non-Smash crowd, I just think that's not fair to them. I don't think they should watch two different games, like two similar games right after another. Like Evo to me is like a, a showcase of all the different variety of fighting games. And when you have them on the main stage, you get to see a huge variety. And I think adding another Smash game to that takes away from what we normally see at EVO and what people enjoy. So, no, I don't think Melee and Smash 4 deserve to be on the same stage on Sunday. No. You done? No, they don't. You done? Yeah. Good. All right. Because <laughs> you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong, okay? Have you seen the numbers for Melee and Smash 4? Have you yeah. seen those numbers? I, okay. I have. So let me let me just put it this way. All right. If you have if you have a huge community following, you have all these smashers at home, the people who are watching right now. I believe that if you have that kind of sheer magnitude of attendees, of viewership, of spectators, all these guys, I feel that you deserve to have your rightful place on Championship Sunday. And I don't think that should matter about the game that's being played as well. Now, I know you have Street Fighter. They usually move on to the latest game. Now, I understand that. I respect that. But the thing about it is Melee and Smash 4, is just, it's a very, very unique system. Very, very unique. What game has been played so long at this kind of level and has drawn so many crowds? Usually, people leave because eventually people move on to the other game. But people have not only stood their ground when it came to Melee as other people moved on forward, They've built a home there. They've built a community there. And I feel that Smash 4 should be up there. Absolutely. It's about damn time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wizard. I am glad because <laughs> it's about damn time we should be on there. Yeah. That being said, I think Melee should be up there too. That's just me. I think that, yeah, they're of the same series. But I think at the sheer magnitude of the numbers alone, it warrants to be up there. I don't think that you should have something where – I mean, even logistically, you're telling me that the melee has to finish in two days and you're having like a KI. No disrespect to KI. I love KI, man. All right. Play the game. But <laughs> besides that, you're telling me that they deserve to be in a place where <laughs> melee has that much more viewership? Can't. I mean, it sucked for Smash 4 last year, but we had to deal with it. We had to deal with the two day time slot of having actually the second most entrance, even more than Melee, I believe, at EVO. And we had to get it done in two days. Now, the venue has changed. They're changing the logistics of that whole arrangement for Saturday. So there actually might be even more room. And if they are on their po on point with how they run the tournament, they should be running it better than last year. So I have hopes that it doesn't matter if they're getting crammed to a two-day schedule. They can get it done and get it done comfortably. So that's, that's a thing. But... I still just don't agree that there should be two Smash games played on Sunday and potentially right after another. People are just going to see, oh, well, this is just slightly faster version of the last game I just watched three hours or more of. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't agree. Even, even me as a, a Smash player, if I'm sitting there, I don't – I can appreciate so many different fighting games. I don't need to see Melee and then Smash 4, like, right after another. On, no. Well, Strides, I'm glad to have you on the show. I'll probably never have you again. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I understand. I understand where you come from. I understand. I don't agree with it. I think you're wrong. I think Actually, I know you're wrong. But you know what? We're going to let that rock, man. You're going to let that rock. Because, you know, today, I, I these days, you can agree. disagree with facts. Apparently. That's the world we live in. So go ahead, man. You are in a new America. You can do whatever you want to do. But me? I heavily think you're in the minority. <laughs> I'm going to follow facts, opinion. man. I'm, it's, it's facts okay. are facts. Facts are facts. I mean, it won't happen anyway because, you know, it's already what it is. Like, 
That's You're true. upset. That's true. But Smash 4 only is on Sunday. All right, man. So. All right. Okay. Well, Sorry, you know, man. Maybe next year. Yeah, yeah, maybe next year. But hey, maybe. Smash 4 is going to be up there. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm glad about that. But now, let's go to the final topic. Of course, you guys already know what it is. Let's talk about Genesis 4, specifically the point nine. Oh Strides, tell me. Point how do you, do you feel that it was dealt with in the proper manner? And do you feel that just do, going ahead and having compensation is enough? Should these people be forgiven for what happened there at Genesis 4? Well, their initial way they handled the situation was, in my opinion, completely wrong. I feel that the two sets, Zero and uh, Zero to Buzz and Komurakiri and Zack, should have been played completely replayed backstage in the interest of time issues, or time issues that they had. Just because, if you think about it, under the tournament rules, they did not play under the exact tournament rules. Mm -hmm. So those sets are completely invalid. And if, if anything, they just might as well not even happen. It, they did not actually happen in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, Zach beat Conan Curry in one match. That was legitimate. And the rules say best of five, best three out of five. So that's another thing that's just not correct. That's not an actual legitimate set. And I also think that, you know, they definitely messed up. They dropped the ball, in my opinion. But... Them uh, choosing to compensate with, like, I guess, flying them out to a tournament, giving them, like, some money. Um, it shows that they're trying to, you know, make. Oh, my gosh. You see that body? <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. This is not <laughs> I'm me. just way too good. But anyways, this go is, ahead. Please continue. Just some other uh, DK sharing my name. Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Go is. ahead. Anyway. Keep talking. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I guess they have to make good on their on their self right there by giving them, like, a, a flight and – compensation for that but you know that's not necessarily gonna make como feel better because i've in japan they don't even play the game for like true, for money so he's not playing for the money he's not gonna just say oh well, this money definitely makes me feel way better about getting cheated out of a, a set and getting seventh when potentially could have gotten way higher but so it's, okay it's cool. okay so we know what is done is done right mm -hmm. that's gonna be done but I think I agree with you. Personally, when you're talking about G4 and how they dealt with the situation, I thought it was absolutely atrocious. I was there. I was talking to the people. I went up to the – I said, hey, you guys need to do this, run it back, do it, in the, do it backstage if you have to. But this needs to be done correctly. So, personally, I feel like they, they screwed up. But moving forward, they went ahead. They were going to give them compensation. They are going to do these things. Do you, do you think that given they already they made a mistake, do you think that was okay? Now, I definitely think for the magnitude of the mistake they made, the the conversation they're offering is adequate. I think it's good enough because getting a free like flight or whatever to like a, a tier one major of your choice is pretty good, especially if you consider like how much that will cost depending on where you're coming from. Maybe to buzz, maybe not so much depending but, where it is. But, but was that enough? Is that enough? That's what I want to know. Is that enough? I mean, what else could they really do? I mean, they apologize – they offered compensation. They did the choice that they thought was correct. I mean, I guess in their capacity, they did everything. So right, I guess that is that is enough. You feel it's enough? I don't know what else they could could be done. No. So I guess that's enough. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you, man. I think that, like I said before, Genesis they moved past it. They did a compensation. I, want, I, I think these players needed – they needed to have a formal apology. That's what I think. I, I think, okay, you're fine. You did what you had to do, you issue. But I think there needs to be a formal apology of what happened to these players. That's how I feel. Because I feel when it comes down, and I'll say it time and time again, I don't care who it is. I will fight to the end because people are going to make mistakes. You made a mistake playing me on the screen. Point so people are going to make mistakes. Nine. That's just what happens. But – but let me tell you something, Strides. And I'm going to tell the viewers at home, too. Let me tell you something. When you are a leader, you take the good with the bad. All day, every day. You take the good with the bad. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. You own up to it, and I will fight for you. I don't care who you are. I will fight for you. If there is good that happens, go ahead. Bathe in your accolade. I don't care. Sip in the water. Do whatever you want to do because you deserve it. You've been working hard for the people. But you got to own up to it. That's where I stand. You got to own up to it. The compensation is great, but I feel the way they went about it is you have it, okay, you have this new rule that's putting, 
being in play. I think if you're at a top eight, T.O. should check it, period. Oh, yeah. Players shouldn't be talking about that. Easy. That's, uh, and I think the fact that that's not said is, again, a kind of way uh, that you're kind of maneuvering around yeah, it and okay. saying that you're not owning up to the decision. That's how I feel. Okay. That's how I feel. I didn't see it that way. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be interpreted that way. No, of course you didn't see that way, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I said, you, humans make mistakes. <laughs> you're not me. You're the worst. But that's how Definitely it goes. Definitely just spiked you, I think. Yeah, you do whatever you want, but you know who won that match. Point nine. You, yeah, point nine? Anyway. You so, want to run back? I mean. <laughs> Come on, man. You know you can't run <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know how it goes, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I would only get, you know, one stock. Yeah, one stock five. only. You know, that's fair. One stock only. That's all you get, man. That's fair. <laughs> but, Great you know, back. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. I actually, if you interpret their language that way, if you read the full statement that they gave, it still seems like they're just putting the full blame on the players. And when you have, like, a top eight like mm-hmm. that, where you guys have so much control of production and all this stuff on stage that players should not be manipulating in the first place, you should just make sure everything is exactly the way it should be. And if it messes up, that's completely to blame on the, the T.O. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know what? That about wraps it up for Final Destination. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's some good points. Maybe a little bit, but bodied you as always man so of course <laughs> people at home just let young strides know how much he got bodied down below please just give this man an answer because he needs help he needs help he needs help from the people and you are at a home save him please please are you done <laughs> <laughs> of course i'm done man of course i'm done <laughs> Anyways, guys, like I said before, go ahead and check out the comment section below. Please let us know your thoughts, how you feel about any of the topics at hand, and have yourselves a damn good one. Take care. Thank you so much, Smashers, for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Dare Down. If you guys have any questions, or if you guys think that you guys can beat us all out in a debate, let us know the reasons why in that comment section right down below. Go ahead and check that out. Also, please go and give us a follow, like, and subscribe. We want to make sure you guys know when the latest Dare Down episode is going to be coming to you guys soon. You guys have a good time, hopefully, and most of all, have a damn good day.